creating a wildflower meadow. In Lancaster we have a lot of rain which creates rich fertile ground which is great for grazing animals. However, if the land is not being grazed then the grass will grow thick and dense blocking out other flowers from growing and only the toughest weeds are able to get through. Reducing the nutrients in the soil reduces the vigour of the grasses and allows other plants to take over and we can get wildflowers in the field. I mow the field three times a year, once in early season mow, around early May, once in mid-season in June to July when the grass is in full growth and a late season mow up to September time. The late season will keep the grass short over the winter period so when it dies back it won't form a mulch. The three mowing seasons tend to all merge into one as it takes me some time to mow so I have a continuous mowing period in the field. I use a scythe which does take some time to mow but it also means that I vastly reduce the amount of fossil fuels that I use on the land. I've scattered wild meadow seed around the field in the places where I've been most vigorous in mowing and have done for most mowing and removing of those grass. Then I found that the wildflowers have started to grow. In these sections where the wildflowers are taking over then I've been reducing when I mow, only mowing twice a year in some places or using rotatory mowing. This will give time for the flowers to spread their seeds. Let's have a look at some of the wildflowers which are growing. Yellow rattle is an annual which is great for encouraging other wildflowers. Named after a rattling sound that the ripe seeds make when the flower blows in the wind. It is a semi-parasitic plant which takes nutrients from the nearby grasses. This causes the grass to thin and allows other wildflowers to take. Dense patches of yellow rattle will quickly reduce the grass, making it no longer a good place for the flower to grow. This causes it to move around the field to new locations each year. Ragged Robin, a moisture loving plant which will often grow in bogs or wetter areas. It attracts a variety of pollinators including dragonflies, honeybees, bumblebees and butterflies. Black Knapweed. The flowers have not yet come out as we're too early in the season. However, it will have a purple flower which looks similar to a thistle. Loved by bees, butterflies and beetles. And when the seeds dry out, it will also be good for goldfinches and seed eating birds. Wild Marjoram is a pest and deer resistant plant which attracts a range of beneficial insects and also creates a good living mulch. It's an antiseptic and an excellent herb for the kitchen. Oxide Daisy, tallest of the daisy family. The seeds are easy to gather and so are often put in wildflower mixes. They will be one of the first flowers to show. However, they do not live long, becoming woody after a couple of years. And so you need to thin the grass to allow it to continue to spread. It has quite a high nectar count and is good for bees, butterflies and hoverflies. Buttercups are generous attractors. They have a wide, open, dish-shaped petal arrangement, which focuses the sun into a beam to highlight its presence to pollinators. Due to the width of the dish, a large range of pollinators of various shapes and sizes are able to visit the flower. Thank you for watching. See my channel for other videos on how I bought a field as an ecological project to build up for biodiversity of the area and to learn historical ways that I can manage the land. See you next time. Yarrow, early season again, so we've not yet got the flowers on it, but it's supposed to be good for toothache. So if you got toothache, you can give the leaves another one, see if that helps. I, I uh, had a go when I had a tooth infection a bit ago. To be honest, it didn't actually work for that, but uh, no, give it a try.